On Larry King Now, Colin Cowherd, the broadcaster, tackles today's biggest trending topics from the world of sports. Steph Curry, is he already a great? He has a global impact even greater than LeBron. LeBron's a more complete player. Steph Curry's youthful appearance and game, a seven-year-old boy can take a ball and say, I can do that. NBA draft coming, Ben Simmons going one. In my opinion, yes, I, I find it laughable. The criticism of 19-year-old kids. You know, these critics are remarkable. 19-year-old <laughs> kid. I was, I was pulling fire extinguishers in high school and I turned out okay. <laughs> my dear friend Charlie Steiner thinks football will be extinct in 40 years. It won't be extinct, it will be different. As Malcolm Gladwell writes, will only the desperate be playing? Plus, wage gap complaint in women's soccer, fair? Uh, the complaint's fair, but women's soccer, like women's basketball, you can dominate in women and still not be compensated at the level of average men. It's the reality of sports consumption. It's all next on Larry King Now. Welcome to Larry King Now, a special guest, one of my favorite people, Colin Cowhart, the veteran sports broadcaster and author. Now he used to be a kid, now he's a veteran. Outspoken, unapologetic style, he's the host of The Herd with Colin Cowhart, weekdays on FS1 and Fox Sports Radio Network, as well as a contributor to the Fox NFL kickoff show during the football season. Thanks for coming. Great to be here. Colin, why did you leave ESPN? Uh, just the structure of the business. Um, it's a remarkable place, but you know, Larry, I would say in my lifetime, the broadcasters that I, yourself included, have admired have all been entrepreneurial. You, Beck, Oprah, Carson, Stern, Ellen. Uh, the Disney structure does not permit owning your content. I can own now my radio show. Um, I can own my podcast, my websites. That allows for generational opportunities. I have now a production company of which I'm getting ready to produce a show for somebody else. It oh. was just very restrictive. You like that whole business? Then. I do. Uh, you know, on a much more granular scale, the Ryan Seacrest model, the Dick Clark model, where I can be a broadcaster, but artistically I can create and help other people. Well, when you were a kid, what did you want to do? Did Johnny you... Carson. But I like sports. So I'm actually doing exactly what I should do. I'm very lucky, you know. You know, like we, you and I, we've never worked really a day. I'm doing what I was supposed yeah, I to work. do. I I love sports, but love humor. So I think I am a fairly good storytelling, witty sportscaster. That's probably my thing. So that's what I should be doing. Where'd you start? Las Vegas. First job out of college. Uh, begged. Went to the baseball winter meetings. What Peter you graduate? Eastern Washington University. Good broadcast school. Um, Played a year of basketball, was not great. Got into broadcasting, loved it. And went to the baseball winter meetings. I called the Seattle Mariners announcer, Dave Niehaus. Legend. Doing well. Legend. Love Dave. Grew up with Dave. My oh my. And uh, I asked him what I should do. And he said, well, why don't, you, why don't you go to the baseball winter meetings with Peter Ubaroff? So I made up 300 cards, baseball cards. I remember my little card said, uh, take my card, dot, 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 please. Like the, like the Henny Youngman joke. <laughs> People mocked me. I went to every meeting, and there were 400 kids, and there were three jobs, and I got the Vegas job. So it was a great break in my life. Vegas baseball. Vegas baseball. Padres, Jack McKeon was the general manager. Triple A. Triple A. I did one inning. Paul Olden, a uh, broadcaster in New York. Ken Korak, now voice of the A's. So you had these real legends and this kid, and they could not have been kinder and more gracious mentors. And I just listened to AM radio every night, Vin Scully trying to get better, taped everything I did, and got a break. And how did you transfer that into talk radio? Well, when I started out, there was no talk radio. So I did baseball play-by-play. -play. I wanted to be you know, skilled in that. Then television, there was a local TV station. I went 20 days in a row and begged for a job. They put me on the weekend. Somebody left or got fired. Um, and then um, I started, I was always a good talker. I felt that local television limited kind of my ability to story telling, to broaden out. And so when it broke in, you had Rush Limbaugh. I used to listen to Rush Limbaugh in Sacramento and then he got syndicated. And I that's thought, where I, you yeah, I was like, I, that's what I like. And so um, I started doing that and, and segued out of TV and into talk radio, sports talk radio, and it just kind of exploded. 
WFAN was the first. Yes. And now there's a multitude. There's a multitude. There's three or four in some cities. In Los Angeles, we have a couple. I'm on the Dodger station. Miami's got several, I think three. Why is sports talk radio so popular? For years and years, a fan could write the letter to the editor. And LA Times has always had better than average letters to the yeah, editor. Yeah, Saturday. But that's 12 people in a city of 10 to 12 million. Sports radio gives fans a voice. It's communal. It's visceral. You can connect. As much as I love Bill Maher, there's only 60 people in his audience, or John Oliver. This is the world can talk to me and yell at me and scream at me, and that's why I engage in Twitter and Facebook. I connect with people, and they have a chance to take a shot at me or argue with me, and I think it's a really special thing. Also, sports writers have a wider latitude than other writers in newspapers. Listen, if sports writers today can write a book, can do radio, TV, I don't know why you just remain a columnist. I mean, the Mitch Albums of the world, the Rick Rileys have spread themselves out brilliantly and have still maintained, especially in Albums' case, if anything, it's helped his business, not hurt it. In that vein, does Colin Cowhart want to branch out? Uh, I think I'm branching out fine. I'm a radio guy that simulcast, uh, multi-platform, I'll do TV show. I mean TV from show. sports. Uh, yes, I think I'm going to do that through my production company. I think I'm a broadcaster that, I think my audience buys into my sports. I think I can do other projects out of sports without being on the air. I would rather produce really? things. Yeah, I don't, like I'd love to write a movie. I have no interest being in a movie. So I have my interests out of sports, I'd rather produce or be a documentary filmmaker. That no interests kidding. me. That's... Yeah, that interests me. But when I talk, I'll talk about sports, 5% politics, 20% life, you know, 75% sports. Would you like to host Meet the Press? No, but I had Chuck Todd on I, Wednesday. Yeah. So I like to talk to those people, but I think the mistake we can all make is not knowing what we aren't. It was when I knew, Larry, when I could acknowledge what I wasn't, when I fortified what I was. Well, you're very special, and I'm a big fan. Well, thank you. All right, Jason Whitlock came out on your show. Yes. Great sports writer. Yeah. And called Kobe the most fraudulent superstar celebrity athlete ever. He went on to say that Kobe's last game was hot garbage, that 60-point game. What did you make of that? Well, it was authentic to Kobe. <laughs> um, I think it was one of those rare games, Larry, it wasn't for Kobe, it was for the fans. That was a, I'm gonna laminate my ticket. Um, there are certain times, fans give, 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 give. $9 a beer, $11 for bad nachos, the tickets are overpriced, the parking's bad, the driving. Fans give, give, give. That was a get. That was a, I'm gonna go and get what I want. And what I want is Kobe to take every shot. <laughs> So Kobe went to that game and laughed afterwards. You screamed at me my whole career to pass. Last night, you screamed, shoot. That was for the fans. That was a laminate the ticket night. So I had no problem with Kobe. So what did he mean by the most fraudulent superstar? He thinks Kobe is a ripoff of Michael Jordan, to which I would argue we're all John Candy, John Belushi, Letterman, Steve Allen, MJ Kobe, Lady Gaga, Madonna. Like, I don't have influences. Larry King's an influence. Bob Costas, Howard Cosell. In high school, they called me Cowherd Cosell. Mm -hmm. I've had strong, I like people that were erudite, Costas. I like people who were interviewers, Larry King. And I say, I've told you this on and off the air. I've said it on my show. I like the uh, intensity of Howard Cosell. So we all have influences. I'm probably 8% Costas and 12% Cosell and hopefully 70% me. But yes, Kobe can be MJ Light. How could you not be influenced by Michael Jordan. I argued at least he picked the right guy. He didn't imitate Steve Francis. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't imitate Damon Stoudemire. You know, he imitated the greatest player of my life. Next, we'll talk the NBA playoffs and, of course, Steph Curry. Don't click away. We're back with Colin Cowherd on the radio, on television. He's one of the best. He's up at the upper elite of the sports broadcasters in America. And he's, how old are you? Uh, 52. You look 32. I moved to California. You know, it changes everything. How do you like it here? <laughs> a lot of, lot, you know, the fruits, the vegetables. It's a joke, ain't it? <laughs> like, what's second place? <laughs> I know. What is the gap between L.A. and everything else. You are not kidding. Okay, Steph Curry, is he already a great? He has a global impact even greater than LeBron. LeBron's a more complete player. The impact Steph Curry has on seven-year-old boys in the world because he looks like them. 
Little boys don't buy Shaq shoes. They don't buy Yao Ming shoes. Little boy knows at eight, I'm not gonna look like Shaq. Steph Curry's youthful appearance and game, a seven-year-old boy can take a ball and say, I can do that. He Best doesn't shoot. dunk. Best shooter of my life. I thought Larry Bird was, then maybe Dirk Nowitzki, Ray Allen. It's not close. And his impact, he's not as complete and never will be. He doesn't no, Chris have Chris Paul is more complete. Yeah, Chris Paul's a terrific defensive player. I'd make him MVP because I love Chris Paul. Yeah. But the impact, he will change basketball forever. You go to a gym this point forward, it for the record, he won't necessarily change it for the better. We're going to have a lot of young guys that want to shoot instead of distribute. I prefer the game when it's layered. We don't have centers anymore. We're not Now we're not going to have point guards. It's just going to be shooters. <laughs> and three-pointers. And three-pointers. Is that good or bad for the game? The redundancy bothers me. Um, what happens is, it's like, it's like let's, let's take um, uh, Howard Stern. Howard Stern may or may not be your brand, but he was good at what he did. But what he spawned were 8,000 wannabes who didn't have the intellect or the will but wanted to talk about strippers yeah the problem is there'll be a lot of curry imitators they'll shoot 41 percent he shoots 49 percent the problem is everybody will want to shoot threes and most shouldn't so what the problem with the great artists and the great performers you get knockoffs very rarely do you get a situation where uh the, the john candies or the uh chris farley's are arguably as good as John Belushi. It's generally uh, a well pretty put. poor imitation. NBA draft coming, Ben Simmons going one? In my opinion, yes. I, I find it laughable. The criticism of 19-year-old kids. You know, these critics are remarkable. 19-year-old <laughs> kid. I was, I was pulling fire extinguishers in high school and I turned out okay. <laughs> He can't shoot, like he couldn't work out in the gym. <laughs> I mean, it's remarkable. If you're gonna criticize a guy, okay, I understand I could say length, limitations, not athletic. He is 6'10", he handles the ball, he's angular, uh, he's a slasher, he's not a great shooter. Larry, when Michael Jordan moved into the league, was his first year in the league he shot 16% from threes, never became a great three-point shooter. For two years the league moved it in, it improved, he had his best seasons ever, uh, that was a 72 and 10 Bulls, and they moved it out again. He couldn't shoot. Magic couldn't shoot. This idea that you have to shoot to be great. Magic wasn't a great offensive player, nor a great defensive player. He was a great basketball player. Ray Allen has never been a defensive stopper or a post player. The only player in my life, there's three ways to score. Perimeter, interior, transition. Barkley's the best I've ever seen. He could do all three. Jordan was, was not as good, in my opinion. In, Pippen was a better transitional player. He was a slasher. So yeah, this, this idea you can't shoot, you can't be the number one pick. My f dear friend Charlie Steiner thinks football will be extinct in 40 years. It won't be extinct. It will be different. As Malcolm Gladwell writes, will only the desperate be playing? Will suburbs not need to play? Will mothers move their kids into lacrosse and soccer and baseball? I, I boxing. Do, well, it's interesting. Uh, boxing, uh, UFC, though, is now the gladiator yeah. sport. Um, but football, with the concussions and the problems, has got to be in trouble. Yeah, it's too, it's too big to fail. It will be part, uh, I always thought the insurance companies backing out at the collegiate level would be the problem. I think it's too big to fail in the near future, but I do think, and agree with Charlie Steiner, it will look different. It, it, will, uh, it will be safer. The merchandising, the equipment will be different. There won't be as much hitting, um, but we bet it. And what we bet lasts. We bet football. We don't bet hockey. We don't bet baseball. We don't really bet basketball. We don't bet soccer. You know why soccer's big in, in, in the UK and in Europe, a lot of it? They you bet, bet it. it. Sunday is not church day anymore. No, it's not. When we come back, Colin will take some of your phone calls. Stay with us. We're back with Colin Cowherd, who is a great broadcaster. And we're going to take some phone calls, prearranged phone calls. I don't know what they're going to ask, but here they are. We start with Cleveland, Ohio. Hello. Hey, Larry and Colin. Hi. Hi. So, Colin, I just want to maybe go back to the NBA for just a minute. Sure. Um, you said earlier, maybe a couple weeks ago, you thought that the door might be open for LeBron to move back down to Miami and make a return to the Heat. What do you think has to happen throughout these playoffs 
for his dissatisfaction with Cleveland to get to the level he ends up back in Miami. Well, I, I theorize that if he lost, like let's say in the second round, they're not going to lose in the first round. Um, if they lost in the second round, I don't think he particularly loves playing with Kyrie or Kevin Love. Um, that if they were upset that he would consider it, um, I think Miami's a pretty interesting team. I think the story of the NBA the last two years has been Miami rebuilding without LeBron. It's not been Golden State. They've but done a remarkable job. That, his image would go way down. It would go. And, you know, we've talked about this as a staff, not even on the air. Um, does legacy matter to him? Does it? What is, is legacy vanity? Does it hurt your business? I mean, he's got $300 million. Um, I don't think he's entirely happy in Cleveland. No, but I was at his house, interviewed him for an hour, spent a large part of a day with him. He loves Akron, he likes the people. That'll be a tough house to sell if he leaves. Not a lot of people <laughs> can afford $25 million in Akron. <laughs> You're kidding. Next call for Colin Cowherd is Philadelphia. Hello. Hey, guys. Uh, I'm a big fan, uh, and I'm curious. Uh, where do you think Serena Williams ranks among all-time athletes, men or women? Good question. Top 10. Top 10. Dominant. Time athlete. Yeah. yeah. Dominant. Dominates a sport if that's a measure. Yeah, I mean, listen, men consume more sports, play more sports, bet on sports. So you can be great UConn women or great United States women's national soccer team and be paid less than average men's teams because of the consumption. FIFA's handing... USA Soccer, a small check for the women and a massive check for average men's teams. But if you're talking individual performances, I would say she's, she's now surpassed Martina, Steffi. Uh, and women's tennis globally is strong, whereas domestically, Americans' tennis is in the tank. We're not yeah. competitive. Our best athletes don't play it. So I think Serena has dominated a pretty strong field, if not domestically, globally. I'd, I'd say she's top 10 right now. I'd agree. Colin Cowherd's our guest, Thousand Oaks, California. Hello. Hey, uh, question for you regarding the L.A. Rams. Do you think they made the right choice mortgaging the next two drafts to try and get the number one pick this year? Uh, or do you think that they felt uh, the pressure to be great in L.A.? A combination of both. Uh, you, don't, you don't open as an, as an, let's say, your Paramount or your Sony and you move your business to L.A., you don't open your first movie with co-stars. You, you go get Hanks. You get Denzel. They had to change the narrative. They're, they're a renter in a stadium, so you can't come to Los Angeles. You're playing second fiddle to USC, and Case Keenum's your starter. If you draft the number one quarterback, even if he doesn't play, he's the talk. It's big. It feels robust. Um, Jay Glazer, I was on a plane with him yesterday. And I said, well, why do you think they made the trade? And he said, it's a miserable life if you don't have a franchise quarterback. I mean, you got two girls in prep school, and your wife loves the neighborhood, and you live in a nice house, and your quarterback stinks, and every day you wake up wondering if you got to pull your girls out of school. It's a miserable life in this league. One more call for Colin Cowherd, Trumbull, Connecticut. Hello. Hey, Colin. Hey, Larry. Hi. Uh, I know, Colin, you've touched on this. I just wanted to ask about the increasing, you know, PC culture we have in our society. You know, in some respects, it's definitely encouraging that some things aren't tolerated, but I'm kind of worried as a sports fan that we as fans aren't going to get any honest or authentic moments from athletes anymore. Do you think that's a pendulum that will eventually swing back the other way, or yeah. things are going to be restricted for some time? I, I've actually felt a little swing back. Um, I felt when we, at, at FS1, Clay Travis, Jason Whitlock, I feel there's been a pushback. Um, I could never vote for Trump. I don't think he has the temperament or intellect to be a president, for me. I think Hillary's the most qualified we ha we've ever had. Um, I, I just don't think she's a very good campaigner. But she's got the intellect and the temperament I like. But I think if the value of Trump is he's made everybody uncomfortable. <laughs> he's made everybody, I mean, few exceptions, he's made everybody in the media uncomfortable. But the value is we're all okay. And that boundaries, whether it's Maplethorpe, it's art, it's Pavarotti, it's media, it's Stern. There's value in Limbaugh, whether I agree with him or not. He's saying uncomfortable things, and that's okay. I always said, bring the Klan on TV to show how ridiculous and hateful they are. Don't hide them. Bring them out. 
put a studio audience around, show their angst, show their hate, the vitriol against them. That's healthy. I don't think you suppress messages. I think America makes the right choice. Barack Obama was the right choice. In our final moments, a few more trending topics in the sports world, including what can we expect from the L.A. Rams after this? Okay, we're back with Colin Cowherd. Let's touch a lot of subjects in our final segment. How well will the Rams do in L.A.? Once they get the quarterback going, good. But the NFC is pulling away from the AFC. It's tough. Cam, Russell, Rodgers, Romo, Eli. A lot of good players. Jeff good Fisher, players. a good coach? He's a good defensive coach. I think he's too conservative. Reminds me of Frank Beamer in college at Virginia Tech. Tremendous special teams, tremendous defense, limited offensively. Wage gap complaint in women's soccer. Fair? Uh, the complaint's fair, but women's soccer, like women's basketball, you can dominate in women and still not be compensated at the level of average men. It's the reality of sports consumption. San Antonio Spurs may have a woman coach. I'm all for it. Uh, I think I, Popovich wants that woman to be. I've never had a problem with that. I think Gino Oriema could coach in the NBA tomorrow. Yeah. I, oh, yeah? I, I think gender is irrelevant in coaching. Football's a sport of violence. Hockey's a sport of violence. Baseball's an old school. NBA's new and progressive. They're always doing new. You know, the old saying is the NBA comes up with it first, football does it best, and baseball makes the most money. The yeah, NBA's always, though. NBA had a multicolored ball. They put sleeves on. Play. David Stern introduced a ball, didn't tell the players. Players are like, give us a heads up. We're the ones playing with it. It's always been a sport that what takes risks. advertising now? It doesn't bother me. I, advertising's everywhere. Where's your advertising? Where's the Pepsi can? <laughs> Where's your product placement? <laughs> By the way, it's so nice to be here. I got bumped like 12 times. But you know what I felt like? They remember bumped the, you from this show? Uh, was Scott Bio not available today? Listen, remember the old <laughs> Come 90s? Come on. Remember the 90s Braves staff that had Maddox? Smoltz, Glavin, and Avery. I'm the Pete Smith. I'm the fifth starter. I get bumped every time I... I'm like the guy in Letterman that comes right close, Seinfeld goes long. You go to drama to quit the Beatles. <laughs> 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 well, I interviewed him. I forgot Peter Best. Yes, yes. Quit the Beatles. <laughs> then we're not going anywhere. Hanging uh, around here in not a great, Not a great <laughs> vocational decision. <laughs> Uh, okay, well, who do you love in baseball? The Cubs, you buy the Cub bandwagon. I think they have a dominant starter and they have power in that park. I don't know how that translates to the postseason. Listen, baseball's the toughest sport. You know, the myth, football is a sport of parity. That's garbage. You have a good quarterback, you win every year. Let me tell you, Tom Brady's going to win the AFC East. Ryan Tannehill's not. It's a yeah. myth. Baseball's the sport where even the guys who cover it can never pick the division winners. Last year, ESPN had 32 guys make a pick. Zero got it right. In the NBA, LeBron, Golden State, you, 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 you know these generational players. So baseball is Kershaw and Greinke can be great. Are they healthy? The Dodgers are an interesting team. They have to get their bullpen right. But between Jock Peterson, Yasiel Puig's off to a great start, Seager, they have youth, they have athletes. That's the game now, Larry. When Greinke left, this is kind of one of my theories on baseball. Nobody can hit now. It's clean, right? Everybody hits 250. I'm not spending $250 million on my number two starter. The Royals don't have an ace. The Royals have figured out, I can send out a B starter and hold you to three runs, then it's a six, seven, eight, nine game. The money needs to be spread out. It used to be people had complete games. I needed a holiday. I needed a Cliff Lee. I need, you don't need it anymore. Just get to the sixth inning, nobody can hit. Yankees get to the sixth inning, they win. That's it. That's the new seventh inning, the seventh inning pitch, a, seven, a guy who only pitches in the seventh inning. Okay. HGH out, Greenies out, defensive shifts, bigger, stronger kids pitching, moving out of football to baseball. You can see, you know, there's been, I think Keith Oberman said 25 pitches, 25 changes in baseball to help hitters. Pitchers generally dominate, then we tweak to help hitters. We are in, it's like a dry county with alcohol. We're in the dry county, the dry era for baseball. You don't need, I mean, Baumgartner's wonderful. Kershaw's terrific. I'd like an ace twice. But who's hitting in any series anymore? Nobody hits. You're a great broadcaster. Great knowing you, Colin. You know, you and I have had breakfast, and I know what you have every morning for breakfast. Yeah. Cheerios with blueberries. You got it. I read you that about come you. come more often. Come you, to the bagel store. You, oh, do you still own it? I own a small piece. Yeah. That's, that's all you want to own. You just broadcast. Let uh, that's it. I don't want to be behind the scenes. You like that, producing. I don't want to produce. You know Seacrest, don't you? Oh, He's done very well friends. for himself. Have you heard? Not bad. <laughs> A big thanks to my guest, Colin Cowhart. Be sure to listen to The Herd weekdays on FS1 and Fox Sports Radio Network. As always, you can find me on Twitter at King's Things, and I'll see you next time.